There are three platforms for accessing genuine spiritual power. Very quickly, three platforms. Number one, direct encounters with the spirit of power. The saints can have direct encounters with the spirit of power. Mark chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, surely I am full of the spirit. Please give it to us. Micah 3 and verse 8. Not Malachi. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Truly or surely I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. You can have a direct encounter. The Bible says God has not given us second Timothy. That should be one seven. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power and the spirit of a sound mind. There is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the saints where he is revealed as the spirit of power. The spirit of power capacity to perform any divine task to expectation that's power capacity to perform any divine task to god's expectation it would be unfair for god to have such high expectation and not empower you as many as believed on him he gave them power number two i wish i had time i would have spoken a lot more about the spirit of power but i have to back down so that we we'll allow our father come and speak and bless our hearts but let me say this in my little walk with god and we're just starting this journey i can tell you the greatest determinant to encounters with god is not prayer and fasting it is the condition of your heart the condition of your heart vetoes your prayer and fasting you can pray and fast beginning from a corrupted heart. Are we together now? The Bible spoke about Amaziah that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. So the problem was not the correctness of the activity. It was the state, the motivation. The greatest determinant for genuine encounters is the purity of a man's heart. Your heart condition prayer and fasting and all the spiritual activities are enhancers but the foundation sincerely i tell you is the state of your heart hmm. no wonder the psalmist said search my heart and try my thoughts and if there is any wicked way in me he says to lead me to the way everlasting are we together number two very quickly what is the second platform for accessing power the power of God, genuine spiritual empowerment is accessed through the understanding of the word. Light from scripture. Not the verses of scripture. Light from scripture. Light from scripture. A thorough understanding of the word. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. Amplified. Very profound scripture. The Bible says God came down from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Haran. Can you give it to us media very quickly? Habakkuk chapter 3, 3 and 4. If we can see that in Amplified, okay. It says, God approaching from Sinai. He comes from Teman or Edom and the Holy One from Mount Paran. And then let's go to verse 4 very quickly. The Bible says, his brightness is like the sunlight and he has bright rays from his hand and there in that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power the power of god hides in his light every time his light comes to you behind that light is the empowerment of the spirit i've shared with you a vision i had many years ago where i saw a very giant door and it was made up of small like post office boxes and there were scriptures inscribed on every one of them it was opening and closing and every time it opened, light came out from it. And I didn't understand what I was seeing until the Spirit of God ministered to me that behind Scripture, the revelation of Scripture is not the verse you are reading, but the light that comes out. So the Bible says, Paul praying in Ephesians 1, to have the spirit of revelation in the knowledge. 
So knowledge is like a container. There is revelation inside it. You see that now? If you do not open up, you need knowledge to have revelation. But if it just stops as revelation, you do not have light. If it is true light, it lights every man. That was the true light. There are false lights. They carry a semblance of power. But you bring them in the face of real life situations and they are impotent. But he says that was the true light. And if it is light, it is for every man. Empowerment by the word. Empowerment by light that comes from scripture. Acts 20.32 and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, he says, and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified. Ephesians 4, 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Hallelujah. Light light you stay with the word you study the word you allow the illuminating power of the word to surge through your spirit and out of that the residue of the word genuine power authority your mind has been altered to think in a certain way the way of victory the way of excellence the lord is my light and my salvation are we together now that when men say there is a casting down in the name of jesus for you there is a lifting up this is not not mere blind confession meditation has opened the light component of that scripture and it is resident in your spirit i tell you show me a man that respects light i show you a man the devil cannot do anything about it's only a matter of time mm. light john 1 5 and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The last platform for accessing genuine empowerment is called impartation. Power that is accessed through alignment with anointed vessels. Power that is accessed. Now please listen as I wrap up. Power that is accessed through your alignment with anointed vessels vessels hmm. in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi and he wraps up that statement by saying ye all are partakers of my grace partakers of my grace a man can be a partaker of the grace of another person and the way God does it is this when God wants a people to experience a dimension of his empowerment, he does not start with a crowd. No, he starts with a man. When he finds that man, he enters a covenant with that man. That covenant becomes a platform for transmuting that dimension of power or that possibility. Not everything, but the dimension he seeks to flow to the nations. And when God accredits that man, nobody will access that dimension of power ignoring the presence of that covenant this is how god works so when he sends a word to jacob the intent is that it is lightened upon all israel jacob only becomes the starting point of that journey so he calls abraham but the intention is the entire globe are we together you ignore abraham you will not even reach jesus he spoke to Abraham and said, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Paul taught us that that blessing was to Abraham and his seed. The seed not being Isaac. Isaac could not replicate it to all of us. The seed being Christ. Then Galatians 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So when God finds a man, a conduit to transmit his prosperity a conduit to transmit his healing he enters a covenant with that man that man becomes his referral point across that dispensation no matter how arrogant you are you ignore the presence of that man you pray and fast and there are certain dimensions of that grace you will never touch it is his economy that is how it works there are men on earth today that embody certain possibilities of the kingdom. When God wants to show you mercy, he does not just give you direct encounters. He shortens the distance between you and access to them. Hallelujah. 
there are men today that embody the spirit of prayer there are men today that embody the spirit of wisdom there are men today that embody prosperity there are men today that embody leadership your assignment is to have the wisdom the discernment and the humility to not just look at them in the flesh but to see them for what they represent elijah had many sons of the prophets you would think the next prophet will come from them but the next prophet came from a man called elisha that leads me to the condition for receiving from anointed vessels honor and service genuine non-pretentious honor and service genuine non-pretentious honor and service there are many dimensions in jesus we only see in john not even the apostles carried it non-pretentious honor and service the man who poured water in the hands of Elijah. Not the man who joined him to prophesy. No. They were sons of the prophet. Their prophetic acumen was being trained and they knew that he was going. But he did not profit them. But there was a man who followed. Listen, let me tell you something. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm saying this because I know that we'll step back and from all the speakers that have come. Culminating with our father here, we're privileged to have it's important there's something the body of Christ is missing you see your direct access to God does not negate the system he has built you ignore it you will pay for it it was it will you will pay for it in ministry in business whatever it is Paul met Jesus but he was still referred to the house of Judah to wait there it was not Jesus that got him filled with the Holy Spirit even though Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come in honor to him. You see. It was in David's destiny to be king. God had already given the judgment. But Samuel was negotiating with God. And he was wasting David's time. A man, not Satan, not a spirit. To the point you would think God will ignore Samuel and say, I am God. Let me go directly. He kept pleading with Samuel and said, how long? Are we together now? Yes. How long will you, you have rejected Saul as king? How long, you are delaying another person's destiny. One man. And God did not bypass him to say, I am God. God came to him and said, I know. I know how emotionally connected you are to Saul. But the point is, I've rejected him. But if you refuse to go, a man's destiny is tied down. And when Samuel came, do you know why God had to ask Samuel to stop? Because if he had anointed Eliab, he would be king. Do men have such power? Hmm. A man can look at you and say, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. It may not make sense. And sometimes with all due respect, this is our arrogant generation. We do not understand the power of prophetic blessings men's life have been made overnight because of the kinds of words let me tell you when you find people who are anointed bend over backwards if you can with all humility allow naysayers and foolish people who do not allow the understand the economy to say what they are saying but god's system will never change you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred by one greater than you this is how it works no man can honor himself you can respect yourself but honor is conferred thou shalt take some of thy honor and thou shalt put upon him so that the nation of israel will listen to him it takes more than eloquence it takes more than a sincere heart we are going to pray since our father is here i don't qualify to do any speaking over your life again so mine is to prepare the way and then i step back and allow him speak you may think I'm just being humble, but that's how it works in the spirit. If you're a man of God here, learn it. It doesn't reduce you. That's how it works. Are we together? Yes. It would be unwise for me to be making prophetic declarations over you as an impartation with our father here. I know our arrogant generation, we've all seen Jesus, but that's not how it works. There is a spiritual system.
Hallelujah. And so, Reverend Sam, we thank you for your life. I have to say this. We thank you. Today is your birthday. And thank you for what you represent to the body of Christ and your contribution. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for everything. And the Transforming Church, my prayer for you is that this sermon will not be a waste. That for every declaration that will come upon your life, that you open up your heart. If you're a servant of God here, if you're a businessman here, if you are a career person here, or you are in any pit at all, trusting God to come out, or you are trusting God to scale heights, maybe you are in debt, you see, men embody possibilities. And when they bring those possibilities, you honor God and you honor the sacrifice of alignment that has made them to be conduits and hosts of those graces. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. And may you receive all that he has in store for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you. We are very, very appreciative of your presence in this community. This is a community of believers. We are here to enlighten ourselves through the word of God, through practical life applicable teachings. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you have not liked this video, please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by this video. It is only God that can do the impossible. And when you are faced with impossibility in your life, the only place to run to, the only person to run to is God. And that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the word of God, to keep praying, fasting, to keep meditating on the word of God so that God will come through for us. Have a nice time. God bless you. See you in another of our videos. And there are so many videos that we have posted so far. Go through our channels. Go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life. Thank you. God bless you. Keep shining for Jesus. Keep shining for God. Peace.